please welcome Whoopi Goldberg! <laughs> One of the biggest highlights of my life, Whoopi, uh, being able to sit here and say to you, but you know how much I love you. You know this. And I'm so excited because we did, we decorated our green rooms. Yes. And I had uh, the Joan Rivers room, the Lucille Ball room, the Marsha Wolfield room, and the Whoopi room. <laughs> That's our Whoopi green room. So can you tell me? Was there anything we missed? We got the shoes, we got the habit. We, is there anything, how did you, how did we do? You did beautifully. I, you did beautifully. Look, see, I'm, I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send you some shoes. Oh, you gonna send me the real shoes? Yeah, I'm gonna send you some real shoes. Oh. Keep the other shoes too, but I'm gonna send you some of mine, but I, I'll spray them before I send them. Uh, yeah. This is what I love, and if you know, you watch The View, and Whoopi's dressing room is full of the most exotic looking shoes, <laughs> and every once in a while, Whoopi gets in the mood, and she'll go, go in there and pick out a pair of shoes. And so I went in there, and I picked out all the ones. She's like, bitch, I said one pair of shoes. Where <laughs> you going with all these shoes? <laughs> And I love that. I, I'm so thankful that you like the room. Love the room. Uh, and you have now, uh, wait a minute, hold on, I wanna bring them out because you got the new holiday sweaters out. Yes. <laughs> These are, look, uh, okay. Look at this whoopee right here. It says, I'm so broke, right there. <laughs> This, but now you're doing something different with the holiday sweaters. These yes, are we have these, the socks. We have these are socks, the socks. And we have dog sweaters now. Okay, oh. wait. <laughs> this is for the dog. Yeah. <laughs> this is so cute. It is kind of cute. So like everybody cute. can be dressed up the same. Now we can include yeah. our dog. Yeah. Or well, the cats didn't work out the way I wanted them to. <laughs> but cat, said... cats scratch me up. Okay, you tried to put it on the cat. I tried to put it on the cat. Cat said, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so you did it yeah, on the dog. I did, so I put it on the dogs. Cause you know, Alex, my daughter has two uh, Frenchies and yeah. a chocolate lab. Uh -huh. So I, I figured I'd probably do something for them as well. And it, they look as ridiculous as you want them to look. <laughs> And, and I wish I could say, you yeah, they look really amazing. No, they look ridiculous. Dogs and clothes is ridiculous, and I love it. <laughs> so it's perfect. And I love your sweater. Oh, I right tried, here. She no, got up in the back where, the, where she has the little tiny elf seat. Oh, you got the elf. Stand up. Yeah, yeah. Stand up. I love, I love that. Sweater. I love that. Well, we got our sweaters. They're good. So we yes. got our whoopee sweaters. Our I sweaters. love this. Yeah. Now, Whoopi, you got your great-granddaughter, mm -hmm. Charlie Rose, yeah. and I know you're excited about that. Is she, like, what's her personality? Is she gonna be like a little Whoopi? Oh, God, no. No? No, 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 no. She's an, she's an individual. She asks a lot of questions, and she doesn't just take your word for it. She wants you to explain why. Okay. You know, and, and then she just, you know, she just likes to do her thing. She loves to hug. She so does. So she'll say to people, can I hug you? Really? Yeah, she, I mean, she, it's in her, it's in her. She just, that's her. So when she's asking you all the questions, mm -hmm. do you have the patience for it to just keep answering, answering? Well, if I have an answer, sometimes I say, you know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. You know, that's what you told me to do with Jeffrey. When yeah. Jeffrey was asking me a bunch of questions, mm -hmm. you said, tell him you don't know. And he was asking Whoopi, and I said, Jeffrey, I don't know. And he goes, you supposed to be the mommy. <laughs> I said, Whoopi said to tell you I don't know. Well, the he thing was about being the mommy is mommies don't know everything. That's right. You know, and so we have to, we have to say, hey, 
You know, you might have to ask somebody else this question or look it up if you can read. Oh my gosh, exactly. Depends on how old they are. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I want to say, because we were texting and you were in Italy. Mm -hmm. You just bought a home in Italy. Yeah. So, but I was curious. When everybody, when your team told me, Whoopi's in Italy, mm -hmm. um, I, I thought you didn't like to fly. I don't. don't. Okay, so. <laughs> But How you get there? The, the, well, the, the deal was this. I felt I needed, at some point, I needed to have a place where I could go, mm -hmm. where I felt I didn't have to pick up the phone, where I didn't have to do anything. Some place I could just go disappear. Yeah. And I borrowed some money from a friend of mine because I found something that I wanted and I didn't have the dough. You know, mm -hmm. I got a lot of family. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and a friend of mine was good enough to, to loan me the dough. And when I started to realize that that was the place for me, Tom and I had a conversation and he said, you know, you can't do what you used to do, which yeah. is have all these places and then you never go because you don't want to get on the plane. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, you're right, you're right. So I, you know, the people at Delta have been really nice to me and uh -huh. I, I've been sort of getting on a plane and swallowing. I just came back actually from um, Disney Okay. I went down and, and read the Christmas story. Right. Didn't get hit by lightning, so I'll probably be back next year as well. Um, <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> you're like, and the Lord said. <laughs> you know. And it, it turned out all right. But I, so I, I've been flying. I still don't love it, but I know that at the end of the trip, I'm going to be someplace where... I can just be. And just relax. Yeah. Your spirit. Yeah. 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 That, I, you know, because I know when you have your Christmas parties at home, you're going to have a Christmas party maybe in Italy? No. OK, no. Well, I was no. just trying. I'm only asking because I want to come. That's all. <laughs> I don't really care about the Christmas party. Well, no, you, <laughs> I, is, I assume you're going to do that anyway. Yeah, I would you know when our breaks are. Yes. You know, and so let's talk about it because I want folks to come because I, I feel like everybody needs a place, whether we are, it could be just your room, but it has to be a place where it's just you and everybody knows not to bother you. You know, just, and I've never had that. You know, I've always sort of been accessible to everybody. I'm, I've never had a place where I just was, where people know not to do it and everybody's left me alone. It's been the greatest thing. Okay. So I feel good about it. I want that kind of recharge. Yeah. Can I just say how amazing you look? Oh, look, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. I just I appreciate it. I'm Brian. Yeah. I'm Brian. <laughs> Because, you know, and I've told this story about when you took me and you bought me clothes when I first came out from California because well, I didn't know how to dress. Some, yeah, you needed some help. <laughs> <laughs> Just in terms of weather, she she didn't... I had a gap was, tank top yeah. with a bra strap showing. And it was cold, and it was like, babe... You gotta put some, you gotta get some, come on, let's just go shopping. And she's like, no, no, I don't have the dough. I said, don't worry about it. Just, get, well, let us get you what you need. So that's not something you have to think about. And you said you know? to me when they told me, but wait, when they told me, when I was gonna pay, I thought my car was gonna get declined when I went to pay for it. And they said, Miss Goldberg, pay for it. And when I was crying again in your shoulder, <laughs> Whoopi said to me, pay it forward. Yeah. That's what you always say, yeah. pay it forward. Yeah. Because you're amazing like that. Well, no, listen, people have been really nice to me through my career and been really good to me. People don't understand that. And it's not because you know about it. It's always quiet on the down low. And, and it's because if you know somebody can use some help and you can help, why don't you help? You know, so it's, life is good. Life is so good, and you are paying it forward, and you are doing, you are just expanding everything in your repertoire, as if you can't expand anymore. You are executive produce, you did executive produce a Lifetime movie, and yeah. the Lifetime movie was called a New Orleans Noel. Yes. And you did this, and you had, that's Keisha Knight Pulliam who's having yeah. her baby. Yeah. But, Patty. La Patty LaBelle. Yeah. Okay, you, the great Patty LaBelle. Yes. Why was it important to have Patty in your movie. Listen, Patty needs to be in every movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just feel like 
no matter what's going on, it could be a, a horror movie, and then, you know, you're going up and you're going like this, and suddenly a door over says, hey, it's me, Patti LaBelle, you all right? <laughs> you know, I, I want her to be in everything, because she is, to me, she is one of those people that is a one of a kind. Yes. There's no one like her. And when they said that it was going to be Patty's movie, I said, well, I, I, what, what can we do to help? Because Tommy adores her as well. We so, so we do. we try to we I, we try to bug her a lot, you know. And you bugged her, and here in this book, uh, you you are bugging us. I love it. It says two old broads, stuff you need to know that you didn't know. <laughs> now, what do you wish you would have known before you wrote this book? Well, I. Here's the thing, my friend Emmy Hecht, who was 93, just passed. And she was the most remarkable hip surgeon. And she really wanted to talk to people about getting older because everybody fetches about it, but ev nobody is willing to stop getting older, really. Because we know what that means. So she felt that if you were going to age, have a good time. And she said, okay. but my book feels dry. Can you bring some humor to it? So I said, yeah, I, I could write some stuff. What, what? So I wrote some stuff, and she said, no, no, I need a little more. <laughs> I'm like, oh, OK. And so I wrote some more. And then after, after she would passed and I really read it, I, I found that we are quite simpatico. She was, she's an amazing, she was an amazing woman. I met her because I went to a fashion show, a Ralph Rucci fashion show. Mm. Now, Ralph Rucci, you know, that, that, those clothes are like, <laughs> you know? And these two ladies were sitting there and, <laughs> and I leaned over and I said, you are the flyest bitches I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you know? And, that's how we became friends, and we were friends for about 10 or 11 years, and she was really helpful uh, when we've had issues with friends that yes. have had stuff. And so she was just, she was wonderful, and, and all she wanted to do was make sure this got done, and I just, I really wanted to make sure we got it done before she passed, and we did. And you got it yeah, done we got before it done. she passed. Yeah. And another thing you're about to do, uh, very quickly, uh, Sister Act Three. Sister yes. Act yes. Three. Yes. Okay, now I am hearing, I am hearing rumors that Lizzo and soon to be mama Kiki Palmer might be in, in Sister Act 3. And maybe even Sherry Shepard, you don't know. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. But wait, before we talk about Sister Act 3, you should know that we, we got it, we got a script, and we're working on it, and we're trying to figure out where everybody fits. We want to get Maggie back, we want to get everybody yes. back in and take it. But I want to encourage people to go see Till, which is the yes. other film yes. that we've produced. And this yeah. is the story about Emmett Till. Yeah, and if it, you, if yeah. you produced this movie as yeah. well. This took you 20 years. Well, it, t it took me 11. 11. And it took the writer. 20 years to get anybody to pay attention. Because mm. people kept saying, nobody wants to see this movie. It's not good. But I must tell you, if you have 11-year-olds, you can take them to see this movie. Because this is a movie, fundamentally, about a mother and a child. That's what it's about. You know what happened to him. You're not going to see that happen to him. But you will be with her as she makes really crucial decisions about how her life is going to go forward. It is not something you should be afraid to see. Everybody should see it, because we all know mothers. We all know sons. And this is a reminder that if we let racism run rampant, this is what happens. The outcome of what they did to Emmett is what happens. And that should concern us all. Everybody. It's not just one group now, it's all of us. So please go see the movie. The, the mother is magnificent, Danielle. Yes. Danielle. Danielle Detweiler yes. is superb. She, you, you will, you've never seen a performance like this, and the young man playing Emmett is delicious. I play her mother. I'm good. <laughs> you know. But that's, that's all of it. That's what's been going on. And this is why we love you so much, because you really do live the pay it forward life. You do. And you care about so many people. And as I was telling the audience, they just don't even, can't even scratch the surface of 
Whoopi Goldberg, mm. Karen Johnson, the, the love of my life. And I thank you, Whoopi, for saying wow. yes to me. That, this Every means day, so much. Every day, all day long. Anytime, Sherry. You know I love you. I love you, too. Whoopi's book is out now. And studio audience, you are all getting a copy of Two Old Broads. Yeah.